Hi and welcome back everyone to our GIS-based back digitizing tutorials. I am Britta and I will discuss the setting stitch with you today. Therefore, we will start a design setup from start to end, run it on the machine, see what comes out. And I will show you a few more tools to maybe make your life with base pack a little bit easier. So let's have a look at some examples first. Basically, all lettering, apart from some exceptions, is made by a satin stitch. Also, most of the contours, if they have like two, three, four millimeters, are all made by a satin stitch. Like you can see here, even in like this zigzag shape. Then you can also fill small areas with a satin stitch. It has the advantage that it normally looks more alive in case of feathers or fur or compared to the tatami stitch, which looks rather flat, what we'll discuss in the next chapter. You can also use it for 3D embroidery. And here for some shading, you know, if you have swirls or something like here is a satin stitch on um, the toe fabric. To decide if an area needs to be filled with a satin stitch or a step fill, you can roughly take the size of an object. So as a general rule, you can say that if the area is between 1 and 7 millimeters, you would take a satin stitch. Anything bigger than 7 millimeters, you would take a fill stitch. Anything smaller than 1 millimeter, you would take a normal running stitch. Okay, let's have a look at an example. I already started a new page and now I will go on to file and I will import a picture from a JPEG file. So let's take this one here, open, and I need to set my measurements first so that my design will be directly in the correct size. So from top click to bottom click, I will say, say 8 centimeters high, okay use original picture and there you go. As you might have learned also in the earlier chapters, we will have to start here in the punching and we always start with manual fixing stitches. So my insertion key is active. I am automatically in my manual punch and I will set my back tacking stitches. Now I have to pick my automatic program. You will see here in our design that there are three different, let's say, strategies to set up a setting. So we have automatic programs to pick from depending on what the shape of my object is. So I have a varying distance here, but still it will be a continuous line. So I will pick the so-called pairwise program. Important before you pick this, make the last stitch where you also start with your program. I will now switch to our pairwise here and it's automatically the first point of our reference part and now with my left mouse button I will pick basically where my stitch directions will be and along the stitch directions the um, line will be created. You can do them even over cross. And we come to an end. Now the end point here will automatically be at the end of the line. Only if you want to have it at a different space, you need to pick it. In this case, I'm happy with this end anyway, so I can press enter to confirm. Now we have to check the parameters of this object. So with delete on my keyboard, I can go a step back and my object is active again. Okay, let's have a look at the basic parameters. Of course, we have here again our tooth wheel where all the parameters are set. I will keep it simple for now when we concentrate on those ones here. The other ones will be explained at a later stage. First of all, we have here the distance. What does that mean? This is my satin stitch and we have a density 4.00. This is in tenth of a millimeter. So actually, 0.4 millimeters between this stitch and this stitch. So 0.4 millimeter distance. That means the higher the number, the bigger the distance between one and the next stitch is. So the less stitches you have, the more open your embroidery looks. 
So let's say you have 4.5. That means you have more open stitches. If we have a density of 3.5, that means they're more dense. And of course, also in the same width here, more stitches. So if you want a standard border as a satin and on a stable fabric, you roughly start at 0.4 millimeter. So in this case, for example, we can see here a more open density. You see in this case here, you have very small, very thin thread and the distance would be higher. So it would be more dense, more stitches. Or here, this is a standard NM40 thread and it would be roughly, I would say, four as well. Here we have our edge types and we have to make sure for a standard satin stitch we will pick this one here. Here's our stitch division. That means how do the stitches behave from one end to the other. No division means I only stitch in the contours. Later in the tatami stitch you see we go stitch, 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 but we want only one to the other side. So these two are set correct. We're happy with that. So I press enter and I will continue with my design. Therefore I do fixing stitches, trim and continue here. I pick again pairwise. You see my setting state like I set them before. Enter and finish. Fixing stitches, another trim, and I will continue with this one here. In this case now, we will use a different strategy. So far we had like a continuous satin stitch, or here it continued from one end to the other. Now we have kind of three satin stitches here. So we would need to divide our satin. Also, if you digitize your own letters, you have to split the object. So we will pick this one here, we call it structured satin. Here we don't have a continuous line, but we will define a closed shape. You see it automatically knows when to close. And we now have to, before we set our stitch directions, we have to set here a contour cut. So I split my object, so we will have this as one continuous satin stitch and then I will split this because imagine the stitches come that way. Here I want it separate. I don't want it to go all the way up. Okay, that's what the contra cuts are for. And now we do our stitch direction. Click, click from outside to outside. And you see here it knows it's divided can later adjust them as well. And I will do here separate ones. In this case, we again want to pick our own endpoint. So how is the whole thing set up? I started here, the setter will come this way, and then it has to decide, do I go here first or do I go here first? I will put my endpoint here. That means it will do that first and then it goes up here. Here's our pocket calculator. This is a recalculation, so I have a little preview. If I don't like my embroidery so far, like here I find these a bit too close, I will switch off my insertion and I can now use my cursor to select and drag loose again. Left and left mouse button, recalculation. That looks much better. Pocket calculator. Enter to confirm. Do my back tacking again and I will do the trimming. And we will now do these blossoms here. So we change to the next needle. So I go to my second needle and I will start my fixing again. Stop to the end here. I will once again take my pairwise and to avoid some trimming, I will put my endpoint at this end, walk over with the running stitch and start my next object here. Later we will shift this under the blue. So I pick my endpoint. I want my endpoint here. Pocket calculator, confirm. Here's my last stitch. 
Now I see that this is actually pretty wide. So like I said, normally you keep the stitches a satin stitch until around seven millimeters. If they get longer, the stitches will get loose. They will be very long and you will see the fabric underneath. So what we do, we go back inside and we change our division type here. So I say, I divide it once with a percentage. Let's say I keep this to 50, see what happens. It will stitch in all the way in between here. What I prefer, I stitch this not at 50%, I will divide it at, let's say, 24%. Now you see here, and here is my stitch. It looks still more like a satin stitch. Also, I want to shift them only when they extend a certain length. So let's say as soon as they are longer than 5.5 millimeter, I want to divide them. So enter and pocket calculator. So these stay all on their original length, only the ones that get too long. They are being divided. Now I pick my running stitch and I will move to the next one. Confirm, enter. Endpoint here. You can see if you switch off the insertion, you can change settings at any time. So I'm not very happy with my setting of uh, my stitch direction here. And calculation, you see again we're on division at 24%. Once again, fixing, trimming, and so I will go to the third needle, do my fixing stitches, and pick my next program. So in this case of the contour here, just center this, everywhere around will be the same width. So I don't need to click pairwise, contour to contour. I will define a center line, and along this, I will give the satin stitch a certain width. Therefore, we have here center line. Now I will make sure that I have corners here. So I will decide between straight and curve. Once I have straight, if I hold my one, I can get a straight line. And now I switch to curve. Back to straight later adjust and now I want this to be a closed object so here we have closed so that the start and the end will match nicely it will automatically be closed now edge type is fine but I want no division and I will now check here in my parameters under center line that it is actually now it's two millimeters so from here to here are two millimeters maybe 2.5 Enter to confirm. Now it's slightly wider. Confirm. Make some small adjustments here. I'm not very happy with this. So insertion off, selection, and it's maybe corner. Maybe here also corner. Pocket calculator. That's much better. Enter to confirm, and we're at the end. Insertion on, back tacking, trim, and that's it. We see here they are slightly divided at both sides, only when they exceed the certain length. But the green is on top of the blue, so I want this in the background. Therefore, I go to the module mode. I have to unsplit those groups now first. So I go to block, make automatically after needle change, and the trim, I want a new block here. Go to order of embroidery and I want this one to be done before these leaves here. So now if I press Ctrl T, you see they're hidden behind. Of course, so far we only decide some standard settings for a satin stitch. So the more you practice with the play around with the parameters, you can do, for example, some shading like you see here, even this yeah, with the metallic thread is based on a satin stitch. Here we have satin stitch with a division and another one with a division. 
But for now, I would say we keep it simple and we have a look what our design turns out on the machine. Here is our first finished satin stitch design. We already combined it with a bit of a running stitch from our last chapter and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you now enjoy making your own designs. Feel free to leave me any comments, ask further questions. I'm always happy to get some more info from your side and I speak to you in the next chapter. Thank you for watching and bye bye.